this is the Havoc OS on Redmi Note 3. A lot of you guys have been asking for it and here it is. The stock launcher over here has Google Now cards to the left. Double tap anywhere on the home screen to get the phone into sleep mode and more features than any other modified pixel launcher and the name of this launcher is Ruthless Launcher as you can see. You can do a lot of customizations up here. Here is the at a glance customizations. Here is the dock customizations. You can disable bottom search bar from here too. Desktop customizations, drawer customizations, pause it if you need it. You can change the theme and icon packs and style or shapes from here. In feature flags, we have stuff like numeric notification option. In misc, we have things like double tap to sleep on the home screen. So that's it for the launcher customizations. And we do have the weather up here, as you can see. The quick toggles does look like straight from Android P, which is really cool. And if you look closely, these white boxes has round edges like all over the UI on the corners, looks so Android P. With normal toggles like the heads up, we have some interesting stuff like sleep by touching on this toggle. And you can jump straight into the calculator from here, as you can see. And you have a lot more quick toggles in the edit mode. You can just add whatever you want to. And you can even add camera up here. You can even toggle the live display from here as usual. So that you can switch between the yellowish night mode or even bluish day mode. Now let me show you the settings. Inside Havoc settings we have all the customizations which are a lot. I will be showing it to you later on. But before that let me show you the display settings now. Auto brightness is working fine here and live display again we have option for the night mode and calibrate the screen colors. In this ROM we do have the double tap to wake feature and let me show you that we do have double tap to sleep too on the status bar as you can see and even on the lock screen there is double tap to sleep feature. In system about phone it shows the Havoc logo on top. Let me just adjust the brightness by sliding a finger on the status bar so that you can get an idea that it's there too. And this is the 24 June 2018 official build guys running on top of Android 8.1 and June 5th 2018 security patch which is latest one. And here is the stock kernel name up here and somehow it says SpaceX. So yeah I like it. And watch this. This ROM has one amazing feature of 8 gestures. I am seeing it first time on a 16-9 display phone. So let me show you as you can see I can go back by swiping from the edges. So I will be showing you later on when I show you all the customizations on this ROM. But before that let me jump into the plethora of customizations up here. Firstly we have the status bar. Here we do have the double tap to sleep and brightness control which I showed you already. Clock and date customizations, battery style and battery percentage customizations are here. And we do have the different boxy looking vault logo up here. You can enable 4G icon instead of LTE if you want that. We have network traffic indicator if you want that. We have notification ticker option. We have the quick pull down option which is working fine as you can see. We have option to show Havoc OS logo. And here we have the system icons like headset, bluetooth etc. Next from here you can customize the column and row numbers. You can disable quick toggle titles if you want a clean look. And a lot more options are present up here. After that we have panels. Well this area is just to change the opacity of volume dialogs or power menu. So yeah you can pretty much customize it from here. Next we have ambient display. And here we do have always on display but I don't know why you would want that for an IPS display but yeah we have the option for it and some more ambient display features are present over here. After that we have interface. From style you can change the UI color to dark or light as you want it to and you have these many color options for the accent colors on the UI. Next we have a lot of fonts to choose from and it can be applied on the whole UI which is pretty cool. You can adjust the blur, the font size and control some menu background tints from here. Now we have lock screen customizations. 
and from here you can change the clock's font size of the lock screen as you can see it's a lot bigger now and you can even change the other font sizes too here we have the lock screen double tap to sleep which i showed you already next we have recents here the thing gets a little more interesting in this rom here we do have the clear all button and stuff and we have three options for recent app style let me show you the stock one first and the system ui reboots every time you apply one so here is the stock android audio style recent apps panel if i change it to grid here we have kind of miui 10 like recent apps panel which looks pretty cool not gonna lie but here you cannot just swipe to remove an app like miui so here you have to just tap on cross to remove a single app from memory next we have the android go style recent apps panel which looks pretty cool looks like a stack of cards as you can see i like the grid one so i'm gonna continue using that one you even have option for slim recents if you need that next we have notification customizations from here you can customize the notification led and yeah it works for notifications and file charging and you can further customize the colors of it from here we have an option for blinking the flashlight when you receive a call like me why which is pretty cool haven't seen this feature in any other custom rom not gonna lie here we have the heads up notification option vibrate when someone picks up your call is present over here moving on to sounds from here you can disable screenshot or photo capturing sound if you want that and i disabled the headset volume warning too you can set a custom action from here like whenever you plug in your headset it will launch the music player for you and from events you can set custom actions like that for each events it's kind of like the tasker i guess next we have animations from here you can change the screen of animations and change it to crt or fade now we have the android p styled animations it's the ui animations by the way after that we have list view animations and we have a lot of them and quick toggle rotate or flip animations too are present here skipping the weather we have buttons here we have the long press power button for torch option which does work and here we have the disable hardware keys option but i don't know why it doesn't really work for me even after disabling it just the capacity button lights goes off the button keeps working which it should not so i can't just use the gestures over here so i have to use the capacity buttons with the gestures and you can customize the hardware button long press or double press action from here as i did with the menu key to take a screenshot next we have software buttons and here is how it looks like and you can customize it further if you want to moving on to gestures skipping the pie control we have the edge gestures well i would say this is one of the most interesting part of this rom from here you can customize it but let me show you that it works as you can see going back works swiping up from the bottom brings you to the home screen and doing the same and hold it will bring you to the recent apps panel as you can see and we have some other gesture customizations here with the three finger screenshot gesture as you can see it works fine so let me go back in fingerprint you have some fingerprint scanner customizations of course here are the ime settings some battery saving options are present over here inside screen we have some kind of screen stabilization feature which uses the sensors and stabilizes the screen depending on how you look at it and i don't know why you need it but let me show you as you can see it's kind of eis for the display itself next up we have smart pixel option which disables some pixels of the display which can save you some juice moving on to system we do have the advanced reboot option here and from here you can directly boot into recovery or fast boot we have add away over here but don't use it guys it harms us bloggers or youtubers we have the system app remover over here in misc we have options like full screen alarm or usb mode chooser and stuff like that next we have trust 
Well, this is kind of a security for custom ROMs, I guess. And here, as you can see, the SLinux is on enforcing. So what does it mean? Well, I think it means if it's on enforcing and your ROM has trust, then you can run banking apps. And while opening this, as you can see, it shows the trust logo on top left. So it's secured by trust. And as you can see, this has been working fine for me in this ROM. So that's a really good thing over here. Here is a close look on the vault -E logo on this ROM. Yeah, vault -E video calls and voice calls are working fine over here. One more problem that I faced after flashing this ROM, my Geo SIM was not simply detecting. So for that, I had to go to network settings, then mobile network, then advanced. Then from preferred network type, I had to change it to GSM CDMA LTE. Then it started working afterwards. By default, it was set to GSM CDMA preferred, which is the last one. So if you are willing to flash this ROM, do keep that in mind. And the stock camera on this ROM is Snapdragon camera app. And it takes quite usable pictures, so don't worry. And you can definitely install GC Mod 5 on this ROM. Here is a card for that. And we do have audio effects in this ROM. So if you are a Dolby Atmos user, you need to remove it first. Now it's time for the app open up speeds and RAM management on this ROM. Well, as you can see, app open up seems quite fast here as the default animation speeds are set to 0.5, I guess. So I think it looks pretty fast. And in daily driving, I did not face any issues like random reboots or something like that or even lags so as you can see it has all the apps in memory so there is no problem with the ram management And about the recent apps panel again, on the grid view you can't swipe and remove an app. You just have to tap on the cross icon and this is how the tabs gets bigger when there are less apps in recent apps panel. On the top we do have the memory bar and here is the face unlock speed in case you are interested in. And here is a demo of the gaming performance on this ROM. Have a close look but while you are watching me playing PUBG. Let me tell you some things. I like this ROM a lot and there is nothing that I miss here except one thing, the battery life over here. As you can see, the battery life is just below average. My frank opinion would be just bad as I ended up getting max to max around 3 plus hours of screen on time. Just 3 plus hours. And if you're willing to know some more issues on this ROM, well when I'm not even using the phone. Some apps does force stop in the background and it throws this kind of annoying pop-ups. So yeah, even with those cons I mentioned, I would still say that this ROM is great, has its own pros and features, so it will get better with time and software updates. So if you wanna try it on your beloved Redmi Note 3, links are in the description, do check it out. So that wraps up today's video guys, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you have not yet, this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today, I'll catch you later.